you look closely, vibrator, but we also are using, you call it a vibrator burn. So what that's from is compressed when the weight of the concrete went in the walls and so that dark section there is from Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to talk about some concrete defects. Welcome to my little camera room here that I've set up, trying something different for this video. Yeah, I feel so awkward when I'm out on site talking to a camera and um, going to Michelle a bit. This video is about some of the defects of the recent concrete walls I did, uh, what causes them, and where I can I'm going to explain a little bit about how to prevent it and fix it. So, some of the imperfections, let's go through them. So just up here, we've got a bit of boniness. So what that's from is water leaking through a gap in the plot. And when the leak, water leaks, it pulls a little bit of the cement with it and the stone becomes exposed. Now, all those little holes up the top, they are air bubbles, those little black holes. And if you look closely, so that's that's from not enough vibration. It's quite common for them to be at the top of the walls. You generally don't get them on the bottom of the walls because the hydraulic pressure and the weight of the concrete forces all the air to the top. Some of these little air bubbles are quite common. We try to get them out. We use a jackhammer on the outside of... So the concrete will vibrate the wall with a vibrator, but we also uh, use a little jackhammer on the outside of the shutters and that tries to get rid of a lot of the pinholes but you can't avoid all of it so here's some more boniness here this wall's not seen so we never siliconed these joints so it just goes to show the difference uh, this mark here, you can see a bit of plywood on it. It sticks out a little bit. What that's from, is, I guess you could call it a vibrator burn. So what that's from is when the concrete have their vibrator down the wall, it's hit the ply and vibrated on the ply and actually damaged the surface. So that's what causes that. This orange mark is just paint on the sheets. So we actually cleaned 90% of the sheets. We've obviously just missed a bit there. Should rub off anyway. These marks running down the wall, they're just water marks from when the wall was curing and the client was wetting down the walls. See more of the water marks here. So that's not a big deal, that's just as I said, that's just water running down the walls. Uh, we've got a crack. A crack in the middle of the wall. It's hard to avoid that on long walls. This wall was about 12 meters long in total. And usually every six meters, you would have a construction joint to allow expansion in the concrete. Yeah, unfortunately, on feature walls like this, you can't put a joint in it because it just looks ugly. So they do crack, but once that settles, they can seal that up a bit. You most probably find in some seasons that'll close up and open up again in other seasons. What you've got to do really with concrete is don't be too picky with it and just take that as a feature. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the bolt holes didn't come out perfect. I think that's because we use different timber for our walls. The timber was softer. So when these walls I did, I really wasn't happy with the way the bolts came out, the holes in the wall. Um, and they're a major part of the walls and aesthetically, that it's really important that they come out well. As I say in the video, one of the reasons for that was we, due to COVID, we can't get the timbers that we would normally get hold of. So we have like a Russian import timber or a Chinese timber and it's very soft. So as the concrete went into the walls, um, the pressure has pushed the walls out slightly. Due to the softness of the timber, it's allowed it to expand just, just two or three mil, four mil. 
and that's been enough to just not get a nice crisp bolt hole. So inside the wall, this is what we had. We had a conduit with our cone. That's it there. Now in the past, I've used these cones, which are much larger. So in these walls, my intention aesthetically was to have a smaller hole and I figured that would look better. And yeah, it did. Uh, there, there's a definite clear advantage with these larger ones with the fact that they do squash a little bit and it just That little bit of flex means that if the wall does expand like it did in our case You'll still get a nice tight seal around here. So in the future, I think I'll go back to using these So in the comments, please let me know if you've got any advice for getting super crisp bolt holes because I do feel like that's a weakness to my walls and it's something I would like to improve. How do we fix the problem that we had? So really simple, the patcher will come in. Um, I would have done it myself but uh, this the client has a patcher that he works with and knows and he wanted to use this guy. So what you do is you just insert a clean unused uh, cone into the concrete hole sit it in there and then that becomes like a bung like a to plug the hole and then just patch around the hole now and then when you plug the holes what you can do is actually cut one of these cones in half down about down there and then you can do this, a similar thing fill the bolt hole with uh, whatever product you're using push that in the hole to plug the hole and then by cutting this in half, you can use that as a depth gauge, create a jig out of it. That way all your bolt holes will be the same depth. Just make a jig out of one of these, okay? See this little dark patch at the top here? Up here. What that is, that is from concrete drying on the shutter during the pour. It was a hot day. It was 40 degrees Celsius when we poured this wall and we actually had a hose during the pour and we were cleaning the shutters um, but it was hard to avoid concrete at the top drying so that's what those ugly marks are but the client's happy he likes them so that's the main thing here's a big section here so that dark section there is from as they pour the, because they pour the walls in runs, you can actually see a run line there slightly. So that's the top of the first run. And then, so when they poured that first run, some of the concrete has hit the formwork and dried. And then by the time we've got to the top, by the time we've got to the top of the wall, the, this has gone fully dry, poured this second run, and you get that darker mark. So to avoid that, we hosed all the walls down and obviously we've just missed a couple spots. It's really hard on a hot day like that, 40 degrees. It's hard to get everything. This weird coloration on this back wall is the same thing. That's just from Concrete that's dried on the shutter. This wall, unfortunately, just has a few little vibrator burns. You can see there the ply. It's a bit of a shame because otherwise this wall was really clean, came out really well. Thanks for watching my video guys. I hope you enjoyed my little new camera, little setup here. Obviously there's just, there's just bits I missed out on filming when I was on site. So. This allows me to get some bits and feel more comfortable talking to a camera without wondering about people walking past. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, helps me out. And 
although I haven't been releasing many videos lately, it's always in my mind and I will be releasing more. I've just been on larger projects where it's hard for me to film. And it's, it's a shame because the projects have been uh, really good. There's been some really good things I could have shown you. Uh, but I'll, I haven't forgot about making the videos. I'll keep making more.